What's up everyone, Bradley Jack Design here with another design breakdown and as you can see we're going to break down my Aaron Rodgers design for my highest paid athletes series from 2019. So um, there's a lot going on here. Uh, here's the final of what I have and I've got everything hidden here so we're going to dive right in and see what it took to create this design. So if you've seen me do these before you can see um, some of the stuff that's generally the same. So I have uh, a background file here. This is a background file of Lambeau Field. Um, this is actually a smart object that I've got some filters on. So let me open this up and show you what this is. I didn't know how tall this was going to be originally, so that's why this file is funny and, and huge. So what I've got here is I've got this initial background photo of just some clouds. And then I've got a box on top of that. And I'll show you why. So I've got the view from Lambeau here. And I have this set up with a blending mode or the uh, blending options or layer styles. So I have blend if selected. So anything that is uh, 167 to 225 is going to get blended in. So I did that because let's say I duplicate this. I don't need to duplicate it. I'll just show you. So if we go in here and we get rid of the blending mode, what I was trying to do was get rid of the sky. So in the original image, there was a very gray sky. So if I hold down the option key and drag this over, it's basically making anything that's lighter than 173 on the scale more transparent. So that's why I have this white box back here to fill back in part of the scoreboard. So I did that as a quick way instead of going in and actually clipping out all of these lights, clipping out the flag, clipping out all this stuff. I just used that as a workaround instead. I then threw my logo on here. You know, very faintly it's on there and then through designed by Bradley Jack design in a couple of different spots. So I threw it right here. I think it's in the same spot. Yeah. So I've got design by Bradley Jack design in the background. So if we go back out, so that's what it took to make the background pretty simple. Um, someone asked me online why I used a photo of an empty stadium and it's because this is the photo I found. I wanted it at this exact angle showing a lot of the field and then having the stadium in the background. Plus I'm a Bears fan, so let's just say nobody came to the games because it's the Packers. So I went ahead and I applied some filters to this, uh, just an unsharp mask and a camera raw filter. As you can see, it really boosts the colors in the blue. Um, I think I just used some generic camera raw that I've used before. So if I wanna show you that under basic, yeah, this is, some edits that I would would have used with one of my actions that I use, um, but one that doesn't or no, and then it tweaks the color a little bit, fixes the yellow a bit, and then a little bit of a selective color on it. So I did add some other filters to it. So I used one of my actions, which gave me this result. So it mutes some of the blues. I put back in some of the yellows, and then I used a selective color to boost the greens. Because as you can see, this is kind of green, but this is very green. So under selective color, if I go to green, I really boosted the cyans, took away some magenta and yellow as well. So that's what I have set up for the background of this image. Next, let's throw Aaron Rodgers on here. So I've got a bunch of stuff here, a bunch of different folders. So we're gonna start with the front Aaron Rodgers. So I've got this initial photo of Aaron Rodgers down here. And then I have a folder down here titled Bottom Shadow Rogers. So I've got a shadow down here. So this is the shadow from the original image. So it is, he's grounded into the scene. So I've got the shadow in the background. Got a regular Aaron Rodgers. And then I've got some edits I made to him. You can see there's a bunch of curves layers, a bunch of, and a selective color and another layer here. So um, this is the slightly edited image, I believe. Yeah. So. In the initial image, I went in, did some camera raw, used one of my actions again, um, the yellow fix action, if you're familiar with the actions that I have available. And then I used a little bit of a selective color to change the green to make it a little bit more yellow of a green, um, which I think I actually go in and then just change in the original document, but we'll see what happens. So I've got curves here. I have a curves layer that's boosting the highlights to boost the highlights up at the 
the top as if the light source is coming from the, the top above him, which it is, the sun would be. And I have a curves layer that is just editing pretty much everything overall, making it brighter. I have a selective color that's tweaking the colors back a little bit. So if I zoom in, you see the green is a yellowish green. This is putting it back more towards a, um, a blue green. And I did that to match the jersey in the background image, which I'll show you a little later. I then have this layer, which is uh, set to hue. So it's basically taking all this weird yellow color cast on the green on his shoes and it's basically just making it full green instead. Then we have a curves layer to brighten up the top of him again, and another curves layer to brighten even more. So I'm just brightening as if the sun's really hitting him. So I've got Aaron Rodgers in the front. He's in the scene now. You can see it kind of looks like he's standing there realistically in Lambeau Field. I then have actually a little bit of a, I've got a Lombardi trophy next to him. So found a photo of the Lombardi trophy, did some quick camera raw editing of it, sharpened it a bit. I used a, um, I used a brush, the grass brush. Let me actually go in here. So this is where the layer is of the grass brush being masked. So I used the grass brush and I just painted towards the bottom of it with black as both of these colors and made it look like it was sitting in the grass. I then did a couple extra tweaks. So I darkened the bottom a little bit as if the sun was coming from the bottom. I then went and have a curves layer to brighten the top. I then took the photo of Lambeau Field and I have it reflecting from the trophy itself on the bottom and then up on the top as well. I took some of the sky, flipped it around, put it down here, um, did a little bit of a liquify to uh, warp it a bit to make it look like it was warping around the Lambo trophy there and then I have a curves layer on top to brighten the whole thing overall so I've got the trophy here at the bottom so it kind of looks like it's sitting in there you know kind of looks like it's sitting on the grass and reflecting some of the grass as well so then I have a big Aaron Rodgers this is the big part of the image that you see so I went in and I edited pretty heavily this image. So this is the original image here with no editing done to it. And this is the edited image. So a little back and forth on that. And what this is, is using my um, action with the yellow fix, which does all of this. And then I painted off of his skin. So his, his skin was a little bit too yellow because part of the yellow fix boosts some yellows back. And sometimes the skin can be a bit yellow. So it'll boost that, which I didn't want. I then added a selective color you can see here. So this is the original image edited. I used selective color to play with the greens, play with the, did I just play with the greens? Played with the reds a little bit to give it a more warm feel. And then I have a curves layer here, which is completely blanked out. And I do, know, do not know why it's on here, but it's on here. So we've got Aaron Rodgers here in the background. I've got a couple layers on top of it that are fixing some of the edges. So this is a color layer and this is an overlay layer. So if we zoom in here on his wristband, I'm getting rid of this yellow color cast. So I just have a layer set to color. I used white and just painted over that to get rid of that color cast. And then I have a layer set to overlay at 50%. And what this is doing is it's actually giving a highlight around the whole area. So if you look around the edges of him, it's just giving a little bit of a light leak highlight. So this is this layer selected. So I selected this layer, went up to select um, modify border, and I probably set it to like 3%, then blurred it, or set it to 3%, filled it with white, blurred it, and then set it to overlay at 50% just to give a little bit of a light leak shadow around him to try and act like he's a three-dimensional object that light is curving around. And then I have a bunch of curves layers. These are all boosting the highlights. So you can see the curve up here. It's boosting the highlights in slightly different variations. So the first one is giving some initial highlights from the top. Second one is boosting the edges a little bit more. 
And the third one is just other fine details I wanted to highlight on his person in general. And then have another layer mask set to overlay. And this, I think I just took a white brush and just painted um, along some parts that I wanted to highlight around the body. So you can see if I turn that off and on, you can see up at the top on his helmet and on his shoulder pads, it's just adding a little bit more light. Then I added more light in, pretty much did the same thing, adding some light around certain areas. I really wanted to continually and subtly brighten up his shoulders from where the light would be hitting it. I then have this curves layer, which is boosting something. Where's this? So it's boosting the bottom of the um, football here, but I have this layer set to multiply to darken it. So I think I reversed course on what I wanted to do on that. So this is just sort of a black layer that's multiplied on the bottom of the um, football there. Yeah, so I felt like doing that instead of having it highlighted. Then I have just a shadow over him overall. And the reason I did that was because I wanted him to be look like he's behind Lambeau Field. And you can see you can he's just sort of floating around here. So that's why I have this layer of the bottom here copied and put on top of him. So now he's solidly behind Lambeau Field. And that's why this here acts as a shadow to sort of make it look a little bit more realistic. So now we've got Aaron Rodgers in the back there. Now we have the text. So this, all of this text stuff, which is was super fun to make. So first things first is this cheese background. So what I did if I can hide these layers individually. So I have this starting layer here. So this is, can we open it up? Yeah, so we've got some dripping here, which is even further. Can I go even further? Can I go even further? No, okay. <laughs> so this is a photo of some drips I found that I just set to color uh, I set a color overlay of this orange on and I was tweaking the sizes here. That's why there's so many of these smart objects. So I found a photo of some like paint dripping and then just made a rectangle on top of it to extend to the area I wanted. Had a color overlay on that to the color matching the, his helmet. Um, this, this whole folder has a mask of Swiss cheese. So I used a photo of Swiss cheese. Well, first things first, I put a little bit of a bevel on it. And I have two layers here um, because I wanted to make sure this top area, well, there's two groups, whoops, in here. So I've got this layer with cheese on it with a couple adjustments and this layer as well. I'm curious actually if these are the same thing and I have it in here duplicated twice for no reason. No, I don't, okay, good. So let me show you what I did here and why this exists. So I have this back layer here where I've got this nice bevel down here at the bottom. It looks drippy with cheese on it. So I'll show you what a little bit is here. So if I hop into bevel and emboss, I set it to smooth um, and I increase the size until these were nice and round at the bottom. Went ahead and hit okay. I added this Swiss cheese on top of it. So this is what I use to shape this object. So. This whole folder has a mask on it, on the layer. And I just took a circle and just cut into where these circles hit the edges because these would be gaps. And realistically, if they cut it, it would probably have a curved edge to it. So that's why I tried to make it as, oops, as realistic as possible. And then have a curves layer on top of this to brighten up the top. And then I also have, how does I turn that on? Yeah. Yeah, so I've got the bevel turned on here, which is giving me the shadow as well. And then I have a curve on top to brighten up parts of the cheese. Now, I like how this all looks down here at the bottom, but up here at the top, this looks terrible. So that's why this second group layer is here. It's pretty much the same thing, um, except it's masked to just the top. So it doesn't bevel down, it bevels down here, but not up here. So that's why I have this other layer selected. And it has the same curves layers to brighten and darken some of the areas to add more contrast. So 
So that's the cheese. I then duplicated this whole thing, uh, mainly just the shape as the background, which is here. So you can see I've got this cheese layer. If I open this up. So I've got this layer. I gave it a color overlay to make it black. I dropped it down a little bit. This is gonna act as the shadow. And I added in these smart filters. Uh, motion blur, Gaussian blur, and motion blur. So basically I'm trying to give it a shadow that's up and down with a little bit of a bleed on the side. So that's what this is doing. So right now it's set to multiply at 80%. Maybe I drop it down to 60%. Just giving it a subtle shadow down here at the bottom. Instead of, you could just use like a drop shadow. It's perfectly fine. Um, I like to do this mes method. Um, motion blur at like 25. This one's at 75. Gaussian blur at eight. And this one, another motion blur at 50. So you're blurring it, blurring the blur, and then you're blurring the blur again. So that's what I use to create the shadow for the cheese. Now I wanted to put text on top of the cheese, but it's not gonna look good. So what I did to combat that is I went ahead and uh, put a rectangle on top of it. So this is the rectangle here. Nice standard rectangle. A little bit of a bevel on top and a gradient overlay to make it lighter at the top than it is at the bottom. I use the same blurs on a black shadow to put it down at the bottom here. So this is the same shadow as the other one. And then on top of that, I put just this sort of little highlight on top of it. And then I put a little bit of a dust scratch texture on top just to give it a little bit of texture as if if this was a realistic piece of acrylic on a wall, it's not gonna be perfectly clean, it's gonna attract dust. So that's why I wanted to put a little bit of dust on there to make it a little bit more um, realistic. Then I have some actual text. So let's see what we've got going on here. So first things first, I've got the logo. So I've got a bunch of different layers here you can see for the logo. And that's because they're broken up individually. So there's one layer that is the white, there's one layer that's the green, there's one layer that's the yellow, and then they all have their own corresponding shadow layers in order to get this effect. So you can see if I get rid of these secondary layers, it's just the standard Green Bay logo. I also gave these a little bit of a bevel and emboss to give it some dimension. So you can see this has much more dimension than just a flat white G. So it's using the same um, shadow, same method with the shadow. It's a smaller shadow. It's only a 15 blur, a 2 blur, and then a 10 blur on here. So I, imp I imported in the logo in separate uh, vector files in order to create that. So then let me zoom out here so we can see what we're looking at. So I've got Aaron up at the top here with a little bit of a, just a drop shadow and a gradient overlay. Oops. I've got Rogers text on here. So I've got where it says Rogers. So that's just the name Rogers. It's in its own, it's got some bevels and some text uh, effects on it. Drop shadow, gradient overlay. But then I have this rectangle on top of it just to give this little, little bit of a highlight. And actually I should put the drop shadow up here. That way the highlight is only on Rogers and it's not on the actual shadow. So I fixed that. And this is just set to screen with a drop shadow. So we've got the Rogers text. I then found a football oops, that had some stitching on it and duplicated it a couple times in a line. I originally had just a generic line here, but I thought this was a little more fun uh, a little more true to playing with the football theme. Same shadow we were using from before, and then a gradient map on top of that to lighten it up and make it pure black and white. Then I have this big old long thing of text from Wikipedia that you can barely even read, but it's just supposed to be there for texture. So we've got that going on. And then I have his signature here at the bottom. So I've got, um, the same shadow I use with the motion blur, Gaussian blur, motion blur. I have his um, signature in here, duplicated twice. 
And then on top of that, I put a tiny bit. Okay, this probably does nothing. I think I had a uh, original gradient on top of that, but I got rid of it. So now we have the lighting effects. So compositionally, I wanted this big Aaron Rodgers to pull you in, this little Aaron Rodgers and the trophy to be a bit of an accent where your eye might go next. And then you go up here where it says Aaron Rodgers, and then you're interested in trying to figure out what this says, and then you end here on his signature and on his the logo for the Packers. I then just have some lens flares on here that I use. So I've got a lens flare up at his, up at the top here. Um, threw a couple lens flares on here with some levels layers and some gradient maps to adjust the lighting for them. A lens flare on some of the helmets. I then have this sort of light leak up here at the top that I tweaked to get rid of the lines and I actually colored it with a color layer of a gradient map with the yellow that the Packers use. And I've got another lighting effect like this that I got rid of some of the haze on it with the levels layer. You see I just tweaked the levels a little bit. Then I've got this big light leak up at the top that I set a gradient map to. That just adds a little bit of a highlight as if the light source is from the top, top right. And threw it on there. Then I threw some dust on here. Just a couple dust, dust scratch layers I have. This one was a little too foggy, so I threw a levels layer on top of it and adjusted where the black point was. Then I took this whole thing and put a selective color layer on it. So this is where a big effect happens. So you can see this is sort of a cold graphic color-wise. So I went ahead and tweaked that, made it significantly more yellow. So I went into the yellows and got rid of the cyans and then that's probably the only thing I did on this, to be honest. Maybe adjusted the reds. No, I just took the yellows and adjusted the cyan down, boosted the yellows a bit, and changed the black on the yellows as well. So this is the final graphic, pretty much. I then saved that out as a JPEG, threw it back in, and I've got this layer here with some camera raw filters on it. So I went ahead, added some final camera raw edits to it, so really all I did was I, I tweaked the contrast highlight shadows. So some minor adjustments were made. I then added in my logo in the bottom right hand corner, added a gradient map set to soft light at 30% of the Packers color. So I've got a dark green, their normal green, their yellow and their white. And that's just going to give everything a little bit more of a color cast that's the exact same over the whole thing. So it glues everything together a little bit. Then I threw a color lookup I use all the time, 2395 set to 50%. And then one more selective color layer, which you can see is toning back some of those yellows. So I went in to the greens on this then, not the greens. That's interesting. Well, let's see what we can find. Let's see what I fixed. Oh, did I change the whites? Yeah, so I changed the white point because the arm here in his numbers, I wanted to be more pure white instead of yellow. So I went ahead and adjusted those and got rid of the yellow, magenta, and cyan. You can see I made these adjustments to it, which then in turn tweaked the whole composition to look like this. So that's what it took to make this graphic. Uh, even though I'm a Bears fan, I really enjoyed making this, um, playing around with some of this cheese, uh, finding this excellent photo of Aaron Rodgers to use as well. So let me know in the comments below if anything from this video really stuck out to you. Um, if you guys have any suggestions for videos you want to see, um, tutorial wise, you know, I'm always open for suggestions for that. Um, other than that, just make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks.